Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick. We are at the Small Cells World Summit 2014 in London's Docklands at Excel. And we're talking about the evolution of backhaul networks. Now, as network operators strive to accommodate the rapid increase in traffic, they're turning to their existing backhaul capabilities and leveraging this resource to utilize new and innovative solutions. How are telcos leveraging existing backhaul capabilities? There are a couple of things. Um, we've seen very large increases in peak rates on mobile networks, um, and those are not always matched by large increases in the mean rate. So one of the advantages of something like point-to-multipoint microwave is that you can um, take advantage of the difference between the peak and the mean. So where you have a peak from one cell site, you won't necessarily have uh, a peak from another cell site at exactly the same time. So by averaging together the peaks and the troughs from different cell sites, you can realize a statistical multiplexing gain. That's one of the signal advantages of point-to-multipoint uh, -to -point technology. Nevertheless, evolution is uh, still required, and uh, this year we've introduced, for example, our wideband product that doubles the throughput of the system from 300 megabits per second to 600, and uh, that's then therefore able to backhaul a very large number of particularly small cells, but also macro, uh, macro cells as well. When you think about small cell networks, it really, uh, and you think about the backhaul for them, it really takes a, a, a toolbox full of options when you think about the transport, uh, because you really need to be able to place small cells where the traffic is, not necessarily where the backhaul is. And so that creates some interesting dynamics. Um, and so the way that you, you know, the way that AT&T has started to, to, to look at that is not just looking at traditional backhaul that we'd use for our macro network, but also look at technologies like VediaCell that we use in our, in our uh, what we brand as our Uverse service uh, for, for consumers and businesses. We actually use those same circuits that, that have been developed and deployed uh, in, in those applications, broadband uh, services, uh, to, to backhaul small cells uh, in some of those same neighborhoods where those circuits uh, exist today. We're seeing this massive increase in data traffic globally. What new solutions are being introduced to cope with that? There's some uh, interesting activities going on. So number one, we've introduced vectoring over DSL recently, which is extending the life of copper. Um, I think we're getting a heck of a lot more capacity out of copper than we ever thought we'd be able to do. It's really quite incredible to see. Um, so we're getting more life out of that. We're seeing extensive use of the GPON network now for uh, providing uh, access to these uh, small cell solutions. And in fact, what we're seeing is convergence of the location of small cells with the aggregate aggregation points that one would see in these types of backhaul networks. For example, a DSLAM. So now all of a sudden we see a DSLAM or a cable aggregation point. It's an ideal place oftentimes to put the small cell. It has power in it, but it also has a converged trunk back into the core network that we can piggyback off of. In a mobile network, you can add spectrum. Obviously, that gives you more capacity. You can, you can uh, serve more, more traffic at, at higher speeds. Uh, you can deploy new technology like LTE, get more efficiencies, greater speeds, or you can go and densify the network and have fewer users per cell, which gives them uh, that, that increased speed. And so now when you start densifying and using you know, more cells, that's where you know, tying it back to the backhaul, you've got to start looking at additional new backhaul solutions to tie that all in. Wherever possible, telcos are interested in reusing assets they already have for macro networks for the small cell environment. And it's obvious why they want to do that, because um, it helps to improve the business case for rolling out small cells. We know from um, data that operators have provided that they want to deploy a small cell at 10% or less of the cost of a macro cell, and that's a really demanding um, target to hit. So reusing any of the backhaul uh, network already deployed uh, is a great way to start doing that. So how can backhaul be used to increase speed and reliability to wireless customers? It's about obviously increasing the capacity of the backhaul network, but also reducing the latency, making the backhaul more deterministic. So we're minimizing latency, we're trying to remove any kind of packet delay variation, any packet error loss rate, such that actually the upper layers, the protocol layers, the application layer for example, is very, very efficient. We do very limited retransmissions in the network and therefore we deliver the optimal quality of experience through improved backhaul. In terms of reliability, as we evolve our network, we're looking at introducing more kind of ring architectures. Uh, we can introduce protection on microwave radios, so we have equipment redundancy, for example. So the whole range of techniques that we can deliver, uh, that we can implement to deliver more efficient backhaul and more reliable backhaul. 
it used to be clear where kind of front hall ended and, and back hall started, right? And when you look at kind of small cells and DAS and HetNets and Cloud Run, it's it's not so obvious where that is. But there are kind of key, you know, access points that operators need to know to be able to get information. Um, but you've got things, for example, like we're, we've got RF and fiber coming together in, in this domain. You know, these kind of worlds are colliding, and therefore, I think that that. Um, evolution of front hole and back holes kind of going along together and the demarcation is not so clear between them but I think a lot of carriers realise that and are kind of working that into their, their strategic plans. What are the specific backhaul needs of small cells and can Wi-Fi ever be a practical solution? Small cells really need high quality backhaul. The key, key thing is to make sure the user quality of experience is consistent the user doesn't want to think, I'm on a small cell, I can tell from the experience I'm getting. They have to be invisible, macro cells, micro cells, pico cells, completely invisible to the user. So the user gets the best connection, the most appropriate connection, and always sufficient rates for the service they want to uh, interact with. So therefore, we need to deliver backhaul that's uh, got capacity, low latency, the same kind of parameters we would consider in the macro space as well. Uh, so therefore, it's going to be a range of fibre optic based services, but also a wide range of wireless solutions, from point-to-point -point solutions in the millimetre wave bands. Uh, the likelihood is we're going to use uh, multi-point radio systems down in the small cell network as well, and certainly opportunities for some non-line of sight backhaul. However, the use of Wi-Fi in that kind of 5 gigahertz band as backhaul, I think is challenging. Um, there's no guarantees as to performance. I think moving forward, we'll see an increase proliferation of that band for end user devices anyway, which will increase the noise level and the interference. So therefore, yeah, I think we've lots of work to do. We've got lots of tools available uh, that help us to build that small cell backhaul solution, but we do need to guarantee quality of experience. That's all from Telecom TV for now, so thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon.